Patty, I have been accused of being a bad influence on some of my friends. I it, know. When it comes to accessories <laughs> for their RV. I know. Not that I've ever said they should buy everything that I talk about, but. They usually do. They usually do <laughs> sometimes. And so I thought maybe today what we should do is have a conversation about needs versus wants. All right. When it comes to RV accessories. And we're going to talk about that in this episode of Travels with Delaney. The podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Patrick. I'm Patty. And today we are joined on the couch by our two Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Truman and Bessie Bear. Truman and Bess. And if you want to see Truman and Bess, if you're in your car right now listening or you're out for a morning walk, you can always check us out over on YouTube. It travels with Delaney, the podcast. It's a dedicated channel where we post the video version which may or may not be a good thing. So yeah, I don't sometimes know. I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. I'm like, I don't know. Do I, I don't look, look so great. Do I look, do I look heftier today than normal? Or I look half asleep or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, <laughs> but before we get into talking about today's topic, we need to do another edition of This or That. Okay, I think All I'm ready. Right. You ready for this one, Patty? I think I'm awake. All right. <laughs> All right, Patty. So we're out camping and I forgot to bring an item. Which one are you hoping I didn't forget? Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. You ready? Okay. All right. So, are you hoping I didn't forget your orange juice? Okay. Or the yogurt? Oh, my. Hmm. I... I I enjoy both. I know you do. Like <laughs> it's almost like you need them in the morning to get you know that's your my, engine that's started. That's like my coffee. I know because I don't drink coffee, um, which I don't understand at all. Oh, no. I've tried it many different ways. Just gotta let it go, man. All right. Um, I'm gonna go with. I would be like, we have to go out and get some orange juice. I orange juice is my thing in the morning. Okay, so which one are you hoping I didn't forget? We don't orange juice. Orange juice. Okay, yeah. so you would you need your orange juice before your yogurt yeah if you only could have one right okay right. all right i figured that's the way you were going to go but i also know you would be sending me to the grocery We'd store to pick up yogurt. Yeah. 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 So. all right that would be on the list of to do <laughs> yeah that one wasn't quite as painful no, i guess no. as some of the this or that some I've been, tough I, you've given me choices well ornery i know <laughs> well the question is is orange juice a need or a want see for and me it is a need <laughs> it is a need it's kind of like my coffee my coffee in my opinion is a need and it's not orange juice with a little bit of vodka in it even though those are fun later in the day but okay yeah it's just well i'm glad juice. you cleared that up for all of our audience <laughs> that you're not putting vodka in your orange juice at eight o'clock in the morning so yeah. I'm just curious who was thinking that, that you had to clarify <laughs> it. So, well, you know, it's it's a thought. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. If I've thought about it before. Well, so. the reason this kind of has come up is there is a YouTube channel who has, let's just be frank, bashing on YouTubers like myself. Yep. Who review products, who have corporate sponsors um, that help us with our channels. Mm -hmm. And they've made the statement that you don't need all this crap. Okay. In fact, they've taken a lot of cheap shots, in my opinion, at snap pads. Oh, which, by have. the yes, I mean, they're constantly like, oh, snap pads are stupid. But here's the thing about snap pads, and I just want to clear this up right up front. We have used snap pads on our Lance and now on our Alliance. We have paid full price for yes. those snap pads. We have no affiliation with snap pads. Most of the things, we, we don't have anything that's given to us. No. Really. Um, and, and the thing about snap Unless pad is, chocolate. we you know, somebody's going to say, well, Patrick, I remember seeing a video where you were wearing a snap pad t-shirt. And you know what? You're right. They did. After we us. bought our yeah. snap pads and I put out the first video on the Lance, they said, we want to send you a thank you. And they sent us a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what they did. <laughs> and like, so I guess the point of this is, First of all, you should never listen to a single YouTuber oh, no. and make decisions based upon that YouTuber. No. All right? And you definitely shouldn't listen to the channel I'm talking about because they like to tell people that their opinion basically is the right it's opinion. It's the correct one. And no the one rest, else can it, have a different no opinion. No one else can have a different opinion. Right. Here's what I'm going to say. I think that we have some products that I think are absolutely fabulous. And we do work with those companies. But I'm not saying go out and buy it based upon what I said. No. Go listen to lots of other YouTubers and decide what you need and what what's you, right for you. Yeah, how you camp and what you want. Yes, because I actually believe as we were putting this list together mm -hmm. of needs versus wants <laughs> that depending on who you are. And how you camp. Right. Your needs are, needs are different, different than other people. Well, it's just like anything. You're, you're your own human. 
right? Yeah. So anyway, sorry <laughs> for that little rant, but it really irritates me when somebody goes out. There's a lot of good well, YouTubers the group is all out there. Together yes. In one hunk. Yes, and and it it's just irritating because. Um, I just don't think any one of us should be the dictating factor in no. what you do. If you don't believe what I say about a product, I'm okay with That's that. That's okay. Because quite frankly, most of the deals that we have had over the years don't really make us that much money, nope. whether you buy it or not. We don't. Um, it doesn't just matter. means Patty doesn't get to go to Starbucks this week. That's about, <laughs> you know. So, And oh. I did a whole video on uh, yeah. how I do product deals. And quite frankly, if we don't use the product, right, we don't work with that company. Right. Like, I have to love the product. It's one if of it reasons. doesn't fit our camping style, if it doesn't, something right. like, what? That is weird. We don't even know. No. It's, I mean, I've had some crazy yes, products offered up to us. I stuff. say crazy, crazy for us, yeah. but maybe not crazy for somebody else. But, sure. you know, I don't need a portable dishwasher in our RV. No, that's um, called me. Right. I don't need <laughs> a juicer in our RV. No. We don't use a juicer at home. We're definitely no. not taking one on the road. No. So we just say no to those. Um, that's our choice. Right. And, but. But there are some good products that we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. And by the way, this podcast, we're not pitching specific products. Nope. We just want to go through a generic yeah. list. And I may throw out what we use, but understand that's not designed to uh, sell products. Influence that, you in any way. That's right. I promise I'll try to be a good influence. Not a, a bad influencer. Yeah, I'll be a bad influencer <laughs> and a good influence today. So, All right. Let's start with the needs list because I do think there are yeah. a few products, if you are going to own an RV, you that you need have, to have. I think you have to. And if somebody wants to disagree with me, please leave it in the comment section because I want to know <laughs> how you would uh, get around this. And I'm going to start number one with you're going to need a water hose. That makes sense to me. If you're going to use the water features in your RV, yeah. meaning the sink, the shower, Showers, the toilet. toilet. Yeah. Um, you either need to hook up to city water where it's a continuous flow. Right. Or you need to be able to fill your fresh water tank right. and use Absolutely. your water pump. Now, one of the things I should mention, and we, you and I have kind of talked about this, sometimes when you buy a brand new RV, yep. the dealership will give you like a welcome kit. Yeah. And it usually will have real basic things like a water hose, a sewer hose, maybe a water pressure regulator. So maybe um, some toilet bowl chemicals. <laughs> Something, yeah. The problem with those is, and so somebody could say, well, you don't need it because they gave us one. And and that's great. That's if the okay. If the one they gave you works, what we have found, number one, not all dealerships do it. Nope. Honestly, I always hope they don't do it for us. Just because some of it's not that good of quality. It's not, it's not good quality. Uh -uh. And like, I remember one time we got a welcome kit. The water hose was so short. I mean, I think I would have had to almost been on top of the water <laughs> spigot to hook yeah, it true. up. Yeah, true. Yeah. So that's one thing where I think you're going to have to go out and buy a water yep. hose. Now, water hoses can range in price oh, yeah. from Depends on what you know, you want. $10 up to 8 Eighty dollars, right? Depending on what you want and the and length, length and, that. and all that jazz. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think you're going to need a water hose. Yep, you sure do. You, okay, so you agree with? I that. agree with that. Okay. Then once that water is in your gray or black tank, you got to get rid of you it. You got to get rid of it, and you're going to need a sewer hose. <laughs> uh huh. And again, you may get a complimentary right. one if you buy a brand new RV. But number one, they're they're usually fairly short. Yep. And number two, they're usually fairly thin. Yeah, they, they crack easy. If there's if there's one thing I do not want thin, it's, it's a, a sewer, sewer hose, hose. Yeah. right? So <laughs> we don't want to remake the movie RV, you know, no. with the stuff shooting all over. Right. So we uh, <laughs> we I always buy. I think it's called like the Rhino Flex yes. hose. It, it's super heavy duty, and they usually last me a couple years before I have to replace right. them. Right. That's one thing that we just don't skimp on. We do not skimp <laughs> on sewer hoses, no. <laughs> All right. Um, and messy. speaking of sewer. Yes. You're going to, again, I, you know, somebody's going to say, well, technically you wouldn't need it. I don't mind the smell in my RV. <sighs> I think you need black tank treatment. I think you do, too. Um, we've had different things throughout the years. Yeah. And, um I don't want it to smell like a porta john. No. And, and so uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about black tank treatment. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like, well, you need it to break it down. They really are not designed to break down as much as they're designed to control the odor. Yep. Minimize that smell. Yeah, because unlike in our house where when we flush the toilet, it goes straight out to a septic system. This doesn't do that. No. no. This goes into a tank right below you and it, sits there and until you dump until it. Until you use that sewer hose that That's you need. That's right. So I think you're going to need, and again, there's a 
lots of different products out there. What oh, we yeah. use is Happy Camper, which is a dry powder. Um, Matt from Matt's RV Reviews has a product that we've heard he is loves, wonderful yep. called Liquefied. Yeah. Um, and so th- that works for us. And if you have a product that's neither works of those, for you. great. Yeah. But I think you need it. <laughs> so um, if you're towing, a, well, it doesn't matter what you're towing. Right. If you're in a motorhome, this doesn't apply. But if you're towing a fifth wheel or if you're towing a fifth wheel, you need a hitch to be able to haul it. Right. Because you can't. Right. I'm, I'm not going to Unless, you're, unless it's. Road. Now, here would be the one <laughs> exception. Can you're you just going to be seasonal. Right, if you just park it somewhere. And the dealership brings it out to your lot. Then in that case, then you could take right. this off your needs list. But if you're planning to travel, you're going you to need, need something, a hitch. You need something, yeah. And if you're hauling a travel trailer, you're going to need a, a bumper weight hitch type with probably, depending on how big the trailer is, weight distribution. Now, again, we want to clarify. Yep. If you're in a Tab 400. You don't need all this stuff. You don't need a weight distribution nope. hitch most likely. No. Nope. Okay, it's light enough trailer, single axle. We never ran weight a distribution. A little guy and probably lots of other little trailers. You don't need that stuff. Right. We ran a sway bar we to did. help control sway. Right. But once we went to the Lance, we had to have weight distribution yeah. to redistribute that weight so we wouldn't have, and then also built in weight uh, sway control. Right. So that's another expense that a lot of times people don't think You don't think, think about. about. Now, you might be able to get that thrown in on the deal. Maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and that's definitely a negotiating point. Right, and we've okay. had different kinds of hitches yeah. and weight distribution systems and throughout the years. And right. They've all done their job pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. And then I guess the last thing I had on this list, and then you, if there's anything I've missed, please uh-huh. add it. But I was thinking some kind of leveling device. I like my trailer level. Yes. <laughs> and so that could be as yeah. simple as you cut up. Um, some boards at home yes. that you'll use under the tires where you'll put one side up on wood blocks. Yep, we've seen so you that. could do it very inexpensively. We've seen those little orange, I call them like Legos. Blocks, yep. yep. And you could get a little bit fancier, more expensive. The Anderson levelers the Anderson that we levelers. like. They're like little slivers, like little slices. Um, yeah. Look like moon slices or whatever that you can like, put. Like moon, moon, moon slices. slices. <laughs> I've never heard of Anderson levels. I think of like when you teach science, you know, the slice of the moon, how you tell the kids. Anyway. <laughs> yeah all right well that's an interesting way to put it so yeah so because if you don't and especially if you have a slide out um yeah, you, gotta you, be level. you need to be level before you put that slide that'll out. mess with your slide um, out. and honestly the old refrigerators really need to be yeah your trailer needs to be level yeah. for those to work properly well and so. ours to keep the door shut in the refrigerator yeah gotta be level and then we have a door that goes up to the bathroom. You don't want that kind of being in your Right. You, know, you can always tell when we're on level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we always check the refrigerator door. If it can be still and not open all the way or whatever, right. we're good. Right. So those are clear-cut needs, yeah, in I my opinion. So. I think so. Anything else on the you have to have. <sighs> and Starbucks cannot be on the list. Dang it. <laughs> so... All right. <laughs> I think that's good, babe. Okay. Now, I think, you know, like everybody wants to make this a black or white issue. Yeah, yeah. It's either a need or it's something you want. I just think it depends on your camping style. It does. And I think there's a central um, where it's kind of a need want. Right. Or want need. It's kind of like gray. It's gray. Um, do you want to go straight to the clear wants first and then we'll come sure. back, circle back? Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the opposite side. So these are things that I think most people would say. I would like them, or possibly you would say I might like them, but you don't necessarily need them. And one is thing, and these are things like patio mats, for right? Example. Like we don't use patio we mats. We have one, but no, we, we don't. We, we threw used it to. away. Oh, it got all mangled up. Didn't yeah, it? we just threw it away. We have this tiny little one. Well, step out on. we have like a doormat. Doormat. Yeah, that's it. But I'm talking about those big oh, patio mats. Oh yeah, we mats used that... to use them continuously, but we don't right. anymore. No. So, like, I wouldn't call that a need. And I've seen no. people, they go buy their first RV. And get a fancy one. And they, one. The, they think they have to have that. Or they think they have to have lights to string up on their awning. Oh, well, we used to do that. We used to. We, we don't, don't do anymore. <laughs> no. We're lazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and honestly, I, I would throw snap pads into a I want. I think it's a want. But I think it's a great it's product. It's a great product. I think it helps protect those feet. Right. On your landing gear. Because um, we know from the Lance it got kind of bent. Yeah, because we bit. well for the first year we did not use them, and when I did order them and put, went to put them on, it the feet tough. were so bent up I had a hard time getting them on. And for those of you who are like, what is a snap pad? It's like a big rubber pad, like that's, octagonal shape or something. Yeah, that snaps, snaps. on to your um, stabilizers yep. or landing gear. Yep. And they stay on permanently. It's like a rubber foot. Super, yeah. 
super heavy rubber, mm -hmm. and I think Snaphead might even guarantee that they will not come off, and if they do, they'll send you a new right. one. Right, and they're easy to get on. Yeah. And then you don't take them off. You just never take them mm -hmm. off. Um, I, I like them for a couple reasons. One is it protects those feet, keeps them nice and flat, so you get a good... Uh, you have a firm base, base with yeah. your landing gear. And the other thing is, I don't like putting metal down on asphalt in the mm. summer. And so if we're like at a Cracker Barrel yes. or a Walmart parking lot or even a campground right. that has asphalt, um, like some of the state parks in Ohio. I just Ohio, don't want to ruin their asphalt. No, because what people may not understand, I grew up in an asphalt family. You, I road you, construction. You did that. Um, asphalt, when it gets hot enough, is pliable. Unlike concrete, mm -hmm. which stays hard even right. when it's hot out. And so it's very – in fact, I've seen Harley Davidson's where – uh, an owner put the kickstand down and on a Harley, down and, and then they come back out, and their Harley's on the ground because it's sunk into the asphalt yeah. on a, a hundred degree day. Yeah. So we just don't want to ruin a nice camera. No. They put to all that work to put in a nice. We know how expensive and, that is. And here's the thing: don't want to ruin even it. if you don't want to use snap pads like that, you right. That channel that bashes on snap pads. What's ironic is they're bashing on snap pads, and yet if you watch their opening, they went out and paid probably pretty those good money. Anderson those buckets, Anderson blocks. Block things. And, and so everybody's going to put something under their yeah, landing gear right. most likely. Well, I think in my mind, the rubber base there has more grip. Like on a, you know, just when you go to put it down, like if you have to use another Lego block, it's not going to slide on you off right. of those things. Right. It just helps you have more We firm. like them. And if you don't want them, yeah. we completely understand because we do throw that yeah. into the, the wants yeah. category. But I will tell you this. For us, it was so important. I had ordered did that. the snap pads for the Alliance before we even had picked it up because right. I just knew we had to have them. <laughs> yeah, so. we knew we wanted those. Um, another thing I threw on this list, and, and I think the wants list could be massive, oh, so we're not going to go through everything. Like a Starbucks card. Yes, a Starbucks <laughs> card would be under a want. Um, a grill, for yeah. instance. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, i got to go out and buy a Blackstone grill, or a, yeah. a Weber Q. You don't have to. You could eat out while you're camping. Oh, you sure could. Or you could cook on your two burner stove inside. Or if they give you a grill, you could use, use that the one grill. that comes with We've the. We've done that before. It just yeah. depends on how you eat, I guess. Right. How fancy you want to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then two more that we added that easily. Now this one is one that somebody could argue. No, this is a need. For I'm going to say for a lot of people who own RVs, mm -hmm. this is a want, and that is solar. Solar. And lithium, lithium batteries. batteries. Yeah. Okay. For us right now, the way we RV, I would say it's closer to a want than, than a, a need. need. Yeah, because I think our style of RVing is changing. Right. We spend most of our time at RV parks anymore. But when we used to do a lot of boondocking, when we'd go out west. Solar was a need. It was a need because mm -hmm. we wanted to be able to camp off um, the grid, per se, like mm -hmm. out on BLM land or National Forest land. Well, and we wanted that solar to help recharge our the batteries. batteries. And we wanted good batteries, batteries that would last, last so we could run things. Right. You know, so an inverter would go in there exactly. as well. Exactly. Um, now, if you have a CPAP machine and you're planning to, again, do some camping to where you're not going to be hooked up to electricity, all of a sudden that inverter becomes a need. need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of these things may be a want for some of us. Yeah. And they may be a need, need for, for others. others. Sure. So, so anyway, those are the those are just an example. And I of, think in my life, I would move a Starbucks card to a need. I, I know you would. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Patty is absolutely obsessed, and she uh, doesn't even drink coffee. That's no, the thing. It's just it makes me happy. And you know what? I'm not going to deprive you of something that makes you happy like that because mm -hmm. it's not that expensive. She loves the mango just, dragon fruit. I can just I mean, refresher just made happy. with water. Just thinking about it right now. Yeah, mm. I'm guessing we're going to be getting a Starbucks later. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this gray area. All right, in the middle. Uh, where you may need this. You might. It depends yeah. on how you do things. I and, and I think it depends, a lot of it depends on your, what's the word? Like, I guess maybe some of your beliefs yeah. and, and some of your risk aversion right. and things like that. So let's just, because I'm sure people are like, what the heck is he talking, talking about? about. <laughs> a surge protector. Right. Okay. Do you absolutely have to have a surge no. protector? No. We never had one for years. Years until until we had a trailer get hit by lightning and it fried our converter, converter and cost us you know three four hundred dollars to we're fix. Like, okay, we need to look at surge protectors. Yeah. Now I've had some people say, well, the surge protector may not have helped you with the lightning, but I will tell you this: we have been using a surge protector now since probably twenty sixteen. And there was a time when we camped in that thing. A couple times saved us. Give us a sign of do not plug in. It is not safe. 
safe. Um, and one time we were plugged in and it shut our trailer down because of low voltage. Right. And low voltage can do just as much, much damage, damage as, as too oh, much. Too much. Yeah. So, you know, could you go camping? Yes, we used we to. We used to. We never thought about but it. But just understand you run the risk of uh, doing damage to your electrical systems if you don't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, surge protectors price-wise, the, the most they range. the least expensive are probably going to cost you about 100 bucks. They don't necessarily do a whole no. lot other than kind of confirm that it's safe to plug your right. trailer. We we use the uh, Hughes Autoformers Watchdog. Which we like by the, to test it first before we plug in. And we're not sponsored. Nope. We paid for all of our we watchdogs. We paid for everything. <laughs> I, I would not ever be without my watchdog for so many different oh, reasons. Woo, woo. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, when the dog's white, it's safe. If the dog, dog goes red, red, do back not. Away. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, yeah, so a surge protector, that's why I say uh-huh. I think for somebody like me, we've invested so much money in this RV, I don't want to risk. Yeah, that's the thing. We just don't want to risk destroying something that we love. Right. And we love doing, so right. it's just our choice. Um, electrical adapters, or as some people will refer to them, dog bones. And these oh, are those adapters yeah. that will, let's say, like in our case, we have a 50-amp right. RV. We show up to a park, and they don't have a 50-amp site. They only we have a 30 need a way to convert it. Convert it. Mm-hmm. And so um, we carry a 50 to 30, and then a 30 down to uh, like 15-amp or 20-amp, right. whatever, like a home plug. Sure. Just in case. Now, do you absolutely have to have those? No. no. But again, if you have a 50 amp trailer and you, you show up in an RV that park, situation, what are you going to do? Right. And so it may be a situation where, especially if you're checking in after the store is closed or late at night, you just may not be plugging your trailer in you're, if you don't carry yep, those. Absolutely. So, um, yep. an extension cord. That makes sense to me that you might need it. Again, it's only a need if you get put onto a site to where the cord going from your trailer to the pedestal won't reach. And you just don't know sometimes. No. You, and that's why we just carry it because we've been to state parks because we like to do state parks and it's so far away. It's like, oh, my right. goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm always this... amazed sometimes where they'll be so far away from the it's actual site. like they're not site. in the middle of the site. They're clear back somewhere so we carry a a, a 50 amp extension cord yeah. which they are not cheap no um, neither are the 30s no. we, but we've always carried i would say if i was to guess a percentage i would say 90 percent of the time we never we have, use it yeah but there has been that rare occasion where we get like, part oh my gosh i'm so glad and it will it. not reach yep. and there's no way to back up any further like the pad only a good example is when we stay at fisherman's cove the site that we always stay yeah I don't know why it's, it's clear at the back. Yeah, and I can't go back any further. No. We carry the it's not a big deal. We carry the extension cord. It works. So, so again, yep. do you need it on day 1? Maybe not. Um just hope you don't get to a site right. though where you you can't reach. So. I guess in our mind we want to just be proactive. Yes. We were trying to over the years think of things that okay, let's just make sure we have this this and this to save us right. ourselves that agony. <laughs> now for us it gets used a lot. Oh, yeah. But it's here at the house. Sure. Because our trailer during the winter months uh-huh. stays plugged into a 30-amp plug here at the and house. we need that extension. Yeah, that's the only way to mm-hmm. get to the plug. Yep. So. so we use ours, yep. Um, a TPMS system, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's a tire pressure monitoring system. We never had this. For but, years, but we did not. my goodness, um, we, it's come in handy. I mean, it, right. it helps us understand... Oh, my, like last summer, I think there was a t- one tire that was getting really hot. Well, that was actually this winter. Oh, was it winter? When we were headed to Florida. Because when we <laughs> left Indiana, it was cold. I cranked the pressure oh, up. Oh, that's right. Because, and it was like uh, below freezing. It was. So I filled the tires up to where they were supposed to be. By the time we were in um, southern Georgia, because the temperature had come up so, so much, much. We were over pressure. We our, right. our TPMS started alerting us that you've got tires that mm-hmm. have too much pressure in them. So that helped us figure out, okay, we need to get off the road oh, and, and fix let it. some air yeah, out, and, and, we and we're fine. And we would have never known that without no. the TPMS. And you just don't want to. I just don't want to blow well, and do damage. Right. I mean, and man, you, that messes up your whole vacation. Right. <laughs> so we do use a. You know, we use the tire minder, uh-huh. um, and. You know, it's worked great for us. Right. We've had that with the Lance, and it's the same same system. Right. We just transferred it over to the Alliance. But again, that's one of those things you don't need it, no. but it will bring you peace of mind. Right. It's just kind of a yeah. It's just a reassurance, a safety thing. Right. In my mind. Yeah. And then another thing that really um, will bring you peace could bring you peace of mind is the gas stop yep. gas protection valve. Right. Uh, we do work with gas stop, so I always like to do full disclosure. Yep. Um, uh, so our gas stops have been provided yep. to us by gas stop. We've they're given great. out many as yep. gifts. Yep, and yep. Um, they're just a 
it's just, a, just good a good company. One, they're just nice people. Yeah, they good are company. nice guys. Um, but it here's what it provides: is peace of mind when we're towing. Yeah. So it's just a valve that all you do is you just screw it onto your propane tank, mm -hmm. and then screw your propane line into the other side. Um, if there were to be a major propane leak, it will shut your propane off 100%. It's the only valve on the market currently that 100% yes. shuts off the flow of propane. And it's so propane. cool if you watch them, they do a demo on how it works. It's like, oh my goodness, it's like, done. Yeah. And you might no say, well, around. why would there be a major propane leak? Well, well if you're you dry, if you're somebody who runs your propane on, I know I this know is a con on that I know this is controversial. You're opening a bag of weed. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but if you are a person, and I think there's a lot more people doing it that will than will yeah. admit it. But if you do keep your propane on going down the road, yep. which by the way is not illegal, I always love in the it's comments not section. Illegal. It is illegal. It's in some areas, it is. For had, instance, it's on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Yep, yeah, you pull up well, to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel. They will ask you, "Have you shut your propane?" And on? you do it. And if you haven't, they have you pull over. You turn it off, and as soon as you get the other, and they tell you, as soon as you get the other side, there's a place turn to pull on. in, turn it back on. Yep. But to say it is illegal across the United States that's, is just false. That's wrong. Um, so Bad you intel. do your research. Yep. Okay. But anyway. But if you're driving down the road and let's say a semi blows out a yes. tire and a piece of retread yep. comes up under your RV, it and could theoretically, ammo. yeah, done. This will just shut that down. You won't, you know, you don't have to worry about yeah, a fire or an explosion that or anything would, like yeah, that. Yeah, that would not be fun. But even if you don't haul with your propane on, I still like the gas stop because it does smart. a couple things uh, yeah. else that people yeah. don't realize. Uh -huh. Number one. You can use it to test for minor leaks. Yes. And most of the time, you will not know you have a minor leak. And they can be just as dangerous, and they're just costing oh, yeah. you money. If right. propane money is money out the way, yeah. there it goes. And it has a built in gauge where you get a sense for how much propane is in your we tank. We use so. that all the time in the winter to gauge how much we have. Yep. We keep the trailer hot and warm and running and right. all that work and so, all the systems going. So, yeah, so that's one that's definitely not a need, but I think it's not necessarily a – for us, it's a it's need more of a want. safety. It's a, it's a peace of mind thing. Yeah, yeah. we have some peace of mind because I think we're getting older. We want that peace of mind. And, and in fact, <laughs> I feel like these last three are all fall into that peace yeah, of mind. Yeah, this next one I think is You've got really the TPMS good. for yep. the tire peace of mind, the gas stop for the propane yep. peace of mind, and a rear view or backup camera. Yep. Um, for hauling peace of mind. And you hauled for a long time without one. Right. We and For years we hauled. Even the big old fifth wheel The 35-foot fifth wheel years ago have. did not you have. You just had mere extensions yeah. on your truck. And, in fact, the Alliance, so we, we had been working with a company called Halo View that we still work with, um, and we had it for the Lance. Right. And then when we bought the Alliance last year, that stayed with the Lance, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't have time to get a hold of a, a Halo View. Right. So we spent all last summer hauling our Alliance 27-foot mm -hmm. fifth wheel without. And did we survive? Yes. We did okay. Okay. Yep, and by the way, before it. somebody says you ripped the AC off that thing. Well, that's different. That had nothing to do with the rear view that camera. That had nothing to do with the rear view okay. camera. But, <laughs> that was um, a height issue. Because my Silverado 2500 has mirrors that extend out. And, mm -hmm. But here's what it does do. And so this fall, Halo View sent us one and to put on. And this is sweet. I can uh, obviously see if traffic is tailgating yes. me, and that's what you sometimes can't see with your extension no, mirrors. You can't. Um, but then uh, the new one that I they sent me, it also has like a blind spot detection. So yep. when cars go to pass me on the left or the right, mm -hmm. it will it will beep and give me a flash on the monitor. Yes, yeah, the sounds are different. Yeah, the flashes it's, it's, are different. It is just a good way to help. Yeah, it's you, just peace in the of dark. mind. Oh, or yeah. when you're in a city like Atlanta or something, it yeah. just helps you know. Because it gets kind of hairy, as you know, if you pull a rig. So yep. you just want to make sure so, you're not in anybody's way. Yeah. So uh, those I throw into that middle yeah, category. So. You don't have to go out no. and buy them. Uh, but if you want peace of mind for whatever we're yep. talking about, then I yep. think that makes sense. So Right. And this is not an all-inclusive list. Right. These are just some of the things. But I, I guess the reason we wanted to do this, like I said, was – don't let anybody tell you you have to buy something, and don't let somebody shame you for buying something. Make you feel bad for buying something that yes. gives you a sense of relief or a sense of I'm not because right. I have anxiety, so it gives me just I can be calm and I can relax and right. enjoy my trip. Just like having something for these pups in the trailer, I think it's a need for us, but it may not be a need for others. A but waggle. The waggle. You're talking about the waggle, yeah. yeah. If you don't have pets, you definitely don't need a waggle. No, you don't. Um, but if, if you, you do, And even if you do have pets, you, you may not need, need it. it. But for us, it's peace of mind that if the power goes out or the temperature gets too warm, we get text An alerts alert. and emails yep. so that we can go back to the camper and figure out what's going on. Right. 
Um, and that way we can go out to dinner, leave the pops behind and, and have peace of They're mind. Happy, and even happy. when my anxiety with that goes high, I can just log into the app right. and go, oh, okay, it's still 68 degrees in the trailer. They're fine. And we also use that thing in the winter to <laughs> yeah. see how, how the rig's going, how warm it is or cold it is out there. Yeah. So it does it, double duty. And no, us. we're not leaving Truman and Bess in the RV. No. In the we're just, I, because of our lithium batteries and I don't remove them, I have to keep the trailer yeah, heated. Temperature. So I can, in the middle of the night, if I'm worried when it's like minus five out, I can open up the Waggle app and see that the trailer's still mm -hmm. reading 45 degrees. So that's one more I would add. That's yeah. another safety security that's thing. That's a good one. I, I, yeah, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah. But, so. you know, if you don't own a pet, you're not going to need that at all. No. So, so again, <laughs> just just do your research. Watch lots of YouTubers. Talk to friends. Talk to other RVers. And I think it just comes down to make up your own decisions and, and don't be pressured one way or the other. One way or the other. Because I, I feel like... You Some know, somebody saying you. these people are all wrong about snap pads yeah. is just as bad as somebody saying, oh, who's, you have to have them. Who, yeah, exactly. It, I, I try to, to always just show products and say this works for us. I don't I don't care whether you buy it. Absolutely. Or not. Um, we just try to show what works for us. And what we've done so. over the, what, 20 years of camping? Uh, almost 2005. Well, 20 years A next year. A long time. And so. we've done everything from tent camping to big rig camping. That's right. And everything in between, everything in except between. for motorhome. We've we never, haven't done motorhome yet. Never but owned a motorhome. What was it? Thirty-three home. foot, thirty-four foot fifth wheel. Thirty-five foot. Thirty-five. Fifth wheel. That was yeah, our biggest. That's our so. biggest. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for taking time. I know this one ran a little longer than our normal episode, but there was just a lot to cover. A lot in to it. talk about. Yeah. yeah. And again, without you listening, it's just Patty you and I talking to each other. Yeah, that's just Judy with Robert. headsets on. Yeah, that's just like us pretending we're pilots or something yeah <laughs> or working or, at walmart or, or working or, at the drive through drive -through at, at, I wendy's, mean, yeah. at wendy's not so, walmart <laughs> and also a huge shout out to our friend and our producer jim. mr jim kuzman thank um, you jim jim is the one who edits all of these for us on the audio side yes, and makes sure they come out just perfect or well i say perfect he what he has to work with he does a pretty good job because yeah. you know it's just us so it, yeah it's just us so. i mean we're, we're we're not his most famous client probably or <laughs> definitely not the highest paying since we don't pay him mm. so so, well, he gets maple syrup and coffee. He does. And he bourbon. Does. And One of these days, I'm going to pay We're going to give him some do yeah. me. That's yeah. right. So. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us this week. Come back next week. We'll have another topic. And until next time, we'll see you. On down the road. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Travels with Lady. We'll see you on down the road.